Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. My name is James Liao from Academia Sinica in Taiwan. We all know that we'll have to quickly cut down our carbon dioxide emission to net zero by year 2050. But how? 2050 is less than 30 years away, but we still have a long way to go. To achieve net zero, we need to invest in science and technology to solve some hard problems. Some of them are commonly known. For example, we need to develop technologies for increasing energy efficiency. We need to build an infrastructure to produce renewable electricity. This requires cost-effective energy storage and distribution systems. With these in place, we are then in a position to use electricity to completely replace fossil fuel in transportation, industry, and buildings. However, even if we have done all these, there are places where deep decarbonization is not easy. For example, in countries where there is not enough land to generate renewable energy from wind and solar panels. In that case, fossil fuel is likely to remain the major source of energy for a long time out of necessity. Also in sectors like aviation and heavy industry, complete electrification is not practical yet. There, we will have to continue to use fossil fuel until new technologies are invented and developed. Therefore, to reach net zero by 2050, a key technology is carbon management. This is a hard problem and it includes three aspects. The first one is to capture CO2 immediately after it is formed. This is in principle doable, but in practice very challenging. The second one is to directly capture CO2 already in the air. This is even harder, but we eventually have to do it. The third one is to avoid carbon dioxide formation. This requires developing new technologies. CO2 is small, like this is a model of CO2, and it is not reactive. Thus, it is not easy to grab. Only a few chemicals can react with it. Additionally, CO2 in the air is very thin, adding to the difficulty in capturing CO2 from the air. So far, the most effective way to capture and utilize CO2 is through photosynthesis. But unfortunately, it is not fast enough. Therefore, we need to develop a next generation technology based on or inspired by photosynthesis to convert CO2 to chemicals, materials, and fuels using a combination of physical, chemical, and biological techniques in order to avoid using petroleum. There are also technologies that can capture CO2 from food gas, which contains about 20% of carbon dioxide. These include using various chemical agents or materials to bind to CO2. However, current technologies are still too expensive to use in a large enough scale. Additionally, once carbon dioxide is captured, we still have to figure out how to store it or utilize it. The third direction is to separate the carbon from fossil fuel before it is burned so that no carbon dioxide is released during the combustion process. For example, one can develop efficient catalysts to decompose methane, which is the major component in natural gas, to hydrogen and carbon, not carbon dioxide. Hydrogen can be used to generate energy while carbon can be stored away. Alternatively, we need to develop technologies to rearrange molecules in biomass so that the CO2 derived biomass can efficiently use to generate chemicals, materials, and energy with no or minimum carbon dioxide release again. Of course, these processes are not cost free and they need to be able to scale up to the gigaton scale. This requires a large investment in research, development, and deployment, and finally, commercialization. If we successfully develop all these type of technologies, 
we can increase the number of possible approaches to achieve net zero. All these efforts require scientists, engineers, and the rest of the society in the world working diligently and collaboratively both to realize existing ideas and generate new ones. Thank you.